Is it possible to obtain a home server that is really cheap? Maybe it's cheap to run, maybe it's cheap to upgrade, and hopefully cheap to maintain. But that's a whole lot of cheap, so I don't think you can do all of those in one sentence. And right now, well, let's be honest, with inflation and recession, we're running short on funds. But thankfully, likes are free and so are subscriptions, but money does not grow on trees, so we do need to find a solution. Now, I've previously built a Z440 case swap, NUS, which was a really powerful system, but I can't afford to relieve that running 24-7. But I do want something that's low power draw, maybe like 20 watts on idle, maybe at least four hard drives, maybe at least four SSDs. Ideally, it should be free. Wait, did that say free? Is that even possible? Okay, a little bit of a condition applies. I'll explain later. But for now, wait, racing, racing noises. A little bit of rain, better clear the visor here. But uh, as you would have noticed, if you're a regular subscriptor to the channel, this is a new look for the channel and uh, also a new helmet. So stay tuned for a little update on that as well. I really like it. But in the meantime, I'm going to get this NUS built while racing and drinking tea. And while I get back to some racing, and yes, I'm drinking and driving, but that is tea. You'll have to trust me on that. I'm going to get back to the race. Now, technically, I need to take you back in time because I bought this PC way back. So technically, it's free now. It's an HP Compact Elite 8300. I used it for my studies while I was still at university, which was a really wimpy system, but it got me through. That's the key. And I even added some of my X79 gaming RAM to give it a bit of power, but now I've managed to get a job and, well, there's a little bit more money so I can upgrade. But it's still sitting in a corner gathering dust, I'm not joking, it looks horrible. Can I take this, which is technically free, and throw in some modern parts and maybe turn this into like a really awesome low power drawn home NUS? Hopefully. Now we'll say you probably have one of these machines sitting in the back corner of your wardrobe. Definitely check it out if you do, and don't forget, like, and subscribe. That's free as well, very important, keeps the algorithm happy and uh, keeps the channel growing. Now while I get back to my race, I guess I'll leave you to the video and see if you can figure out how to do this. So here it is. I've got the machine. You can dig out whatever machine you've got lying in your wardrobe. But uh, here it is. Maybe it's a little too hot to handle, but uh, some really dated hardware. But we're just here for the expandability. Now this particular one is a small form factor machine. And what is this? That is not even mounted. Okay, I've seen enough. I'm out. This is just too scary. Okay, I can't leave you hanging. And truth be told, that's actually my handiwork. Forgive me for that. Uh, I did at least try and, I mean, I put some anti-static there. That's at least an attempt at mounting in a hard drive without mounting in a hard drive. Now, you can get caddies for this, but I said it was going to be free, so no caddies. Uh, that would definitely suffice. Just don't tilt it around. You'll short something out. But uh, back to the uh, machine of interest here. So all we need to do is actually take small hard drives that we have lying around. And the real magic here is then the front I.O. expansion. Now, this particular front IO here has a very nice handy 3.5 inch bay and there's even a 5.25 inch bay. Let's have a better look at these. But before we get there, let's uh, quickly inspect the CPU. Okay, there's our nice little cooler there. We have some shrouding and we can see a few PCI slots. Uh, three in fact, not quite sure on the lane expandability there. We'll have to check those are actually X16 with 16 lanes. But we have a nice Wi-Fi card here. That's always a bonus. No aerials, uh, too cheap for aerials. And we're going to throw in a little NVMe. Now, this particular one is uh, actually going to go into a different machine. So we're going to take this really cheap NVMe off AliExpress. So that, I guess, increases the budget. We could throw in a 970 Evo Plus, but that's way too expensive. So we'll save that for a different build. We're going for low budget here. But uh, there's our little fan. Now, I would love to take out this uh, fan unit here, but it's too difficult. I'm just going to leave it in. If you really want to take it out, you could, but I guess there's no reason to take it out. We're just here to install some hardware. Now here's the RAM I spoke of. This is uh, Rip Jaws Z, very, very old G-Skill RAM. Look at that, 1600 megahertz, DDR3. I'm not joking, this is out of my gaming rig from like 2016, 2017, I forget, it's been so long, it blew up. And then I upgraded to workstations. And uh, here's another little module, I think I got this real cheap back in the days as well. 1600 megahertz, should do just fine for our NAS. If anything it's good, it's not gonna draw too much power. Now let's dig into this front area. we got a 5.25 inch bay, we have our front I.O., we have a bunch of screws for hard drive mounting, and even a nice 3.2 or 3.5 inch bay. Now what's going to be the magic here is we can take out this DVD right in. I'm sure your machine at home has one of these as well, so you can totally take that out. And we're going to throw in one of these. If you've uh, been supporting the channel for a while, you've probably picked up a trend by now. I have a lot of these adapters, they're really, really invaluable. In fact, we're going to see two of them go into this machine. But potentially, I'll show you how in a second. But 
There it is, very easy. Once we add that, what can we do? Well, we can secure a whole bunch of hard drives and you actually see it's really compatible with this particular unit and wait, that hard drive's not mounted either. Wow, my handiwork. Uh, but very important, our power supply, we need to check. This is only a 240 watt, which means our expandability will be slightly limited. But we should be able to add more than enough hard drives with a typical 3.5 inch hard drive using between 8 and 15 watt. You can do the math on that. We should be able to run at least like 6 without running into problems. Maybe 8? I'll show you how to do that. But very important, we will need splitter cables. These are the SATA power splitters that's going to allow us to fit as many hard drives as our hearts may desire. I'm going to go for as many as I can fit, or should I say as many as I can afford for free, whatever that means. But here's our second adapter. That's right, I did promise at least uh, two adapters. So I'm really curious. I feel like there's a massive gap where the PCI slots are. Can we fit one in here? Man, now that is unique. Now, if you're really barbaric, you could totally drill some holes through that rear I.O. You probably mount this with a couple of screws, maybe a couple of bolts, and look at that. You could expand this. This could turn into a monstrous low power draw NAS if you were that way inclined. Now, would I do it like this? I don't know. If you leave it and you rely on gravity, I guess you could. We could put at least four SSDs in that one, or depending on how we configure it, one hard drive and two SSDs. And then we have our second adapter, which we can also fit the same amount of SSDs or hard drives. So, I mean, you could totally spec this out and make it a killer NAS, but it's really up to you. But for me, I'm just going to go for really simple. We're going to throw in three of those spinners and maybe a couple of SSDs. I'll see what I have uh, lying in the supply box. Now, important to do some cable management, a little bit of insulation tape. We'll keep those wires out of our way. Now, we have four SATA ports on the motherboard. And if you've done the math, that does mean we can only fit four drives unless we get some PCIe expansion. So that could be something well worth doing in the future so that we have the ability to fit even more hard drives. But for now, I'm just going to keep it simple. We're going to go for a couple of hard drives probably. And this is one candidate, one TB, which I pinched out of another machine. Now, where's the screws that we need? Any, mini miny, mo. No, not that one. That looks like the 2.5 inch bay. So we'll keep that for the SSDs. That one's mounted to the rack. And there's the 3.5s. Perfect, we need a few of these. Now, again, I'm going to be skimpy here. I'm not even going to mount all of the screws because, well, you probably don't need to mount all of them. You'd likely get away with two and be fine. But for the hard drive, definitely going to go for four. That secures it nice and tight, and we will not, hopefully, lose that hard drive. Now, one thing to consider there, there will be some vibration there, so hopefully this isn't too noisy. But not too much we can do on that without installing O-rings. But here's the SSDs. We'll call this my supply box, looking a little empty, but... We have a couple of brand new 870 QVOs. Okay, so breaking the budget there, that doesn't really make it free anymore. But you get the idea. You can take hard drives. Hard drives are extra, right? No one else actually includes that in the pricing for their videos. I don't know why. They probably should. But let's have a look. I've never actually opened one of these manuals. Is this any good? Instructions, warranty, legal stuff. Oh, okay. This is cool. Some pictures. We have SATA M.2 and NVMe M.2 installation, not relevant to our SSD, and the software. Well, well done, Samsung. It's pretty well designed. But let's grab a hard drive of interest. So this is the 870 QVO. Pretty pretty reasonable 1TB. You'll notice the date on there, 2021. Wow, that's odd. But it's going to be able to perform relatively well in our NAS because that's going to give us at least 2TB of really rapid storage. Uh, remind me to restock that supply box when there's a nice sale. Miss Black Friday sales, but maybe uh, Christmas, Boxing Day, right? Oops, I uh, lost that screw. But... Uh, taking shortcuts here, SSDs, I'm only going to mount with two screws each in case I need to remove them again. You may want to use all four if you were that way inclined, but let's be honest, they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it feels pretty sturdy, and that's ready to be mounted. That's one bay expansion done. So that's going to give us a very, very handy 1TB, plus another 4TB, plus another 1TB. Man, that's giving us a total of 6 terabyte just and some rapid storage upgrades. Now I'm going to secure this with a couple of screws and at least one on that particular hard drive. Probably worth doing. Not that I intend for this to be thrown around. It should be pretty stable uh, thanks to gravity. But it doesn't hurt. We'll throw those screws in. And I might flip this over because I think that's actually going to give me better access for the SATA cables. Now we do have to be careful here for the cables just to make sure we don't run into problems. So let's check this out. We have one extra SATA power connector. So I can do the 3.5s, but that's not enough. So we need one of these splitters. This is the only one I have on hand at the time of filming. It's a very handy female to two males. So that's going to allow us 
very, very simply to expand our SATA port connectivity to allow us to fit those two SSDs. Now I'm short one cable as you would have noticed, but I'm also short one SATA port. So I can't really install that without some sort of fancy PCIe expansion, which at the time of filming, I didn't have the foresight to have on hand. So I didn't do the math on that one, but keep that in mind. More hard drives means you're going to need expansion cards. They're really cheap on eBay and I guess Amazon. I can send some links through or even AliExpress if you're that way inclined. But for now, we've got our SATA cables connected, some cable management. We're going to be able to fit our two SSDs as well as at least two hard drives, one 4TB and one 1TB. Now, pretty important to try and relay these cables as best as possible. But for now, this is going to do, it's really messy. You probably could cable manage better than that, but uh, I will be back in here at some point. Now, technically that's finish. I mean, was it really that easy? We've now got tremendous amount of storage you may have missed a couple of details but i feel like we're getting oh wait there's some extra screws there that's really handy well done hp that's really cool that's a whole heap of mounting screws uh but very important when i first booted this it uh, actually failed and this is just a common pain on this particular small form factor machine and there's no instructions on the side panel aside from i guess useful things and the latch but uh there's actually a boot error on the ram you must allocate these to the correct slots otherwise they do not boot no matter what you do and wow even some free coffee stands that's great where have i stored this okay so it's our sata ports our, sorry usb 3.0 ports our rear periphery we only have one gigabit ethernet and we'll quickly connect our vga cable and in this case we can't fit the dbi it's a little bit older but it has integrated graphics that should be fine and power now to boot it wait are we booting from a hard drive? I thought I said it was going to boot from an NVMe. That's right, we're booting from an NVMe. There's no way we're booting on uh, anything else. But take note, this particular system is too old to boot from an NVMe within PCIe. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, did you hear the beeping noise? It's okay. So initially it didn't boot. I had to open it back up and fix up the RAM. Uh, put it in the wrong slot. That's okay. It happens uh, to the best of us. But now it's fixed. We're running an M.2 NVMe through USB to TrueNAS. Now that I have the IP for my TrueNAS, let's quickly launch into our system. And there it is, TrueNAS booted up. We have our eight gig of RAM, that's always handy. And a very powerful i3 third gen, 3.3 gigahertz. Wow, that's really odd, but we don't need anything more powerful. Now in terms of the setup here, I'm just gonna show you the results. If you want a full video on TrueNAS, there are thousands of guides on how to do this. Sorry, I haven't actually had the time to do one as of yet. But just proof of the concept, we're getting around 100 megabytes per second, basically saturating the one gigabit port with our TrueNAS server. We did have to set up a few things. I'm also going to show the power there. So it's using around 20 watts, which is pretty reasonable. And I will say I've not finished that race yet. So man, we did that really fast and I did come first, which is really important. 24 races, uh, Forza Motorsport, really good game. But that's it, we've done it. We now have an incredible home NAS, which I guess you can use for almost any purpose. And all you had to do was uh, dig out that machine in the back of your closet. Man, that's such good value. Now, stay tuned for future videos. I'm going to get back to my next race, and I guess I'll catch you on the next video. Take it easy out there. Good luck if you're nice. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Make sure to like and comment. Uh, don't comment on my driving, though. My driving's perfect. That's right. Take it easy. Man, this had Z. Such a good car. Look at this.